In this video, we're going to be taking a look at my M1 Finance portfolio, which is focused on uh, stocks that I think are going to grow rapidly over the next few years and are uh, just more focused on capital appreciation rather than dividends. Uh, so obviously the market's been getting hit a little bit the past uh, week or two and some of the stocks I own have really been getting hit. So it'll be interesting to see how those are doing um, and see what uh, my confidence is looking like uh, with the state of my portfolio. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you don't know, my name is Frank Vlarsic and on my YouTube channel, I talk about investing, uh, personal finance, the stock market, all of that stuff, uh, and just my personal journey of investing. And part of that um, is a little bit of investing that is more focused on growth and capital appreciation. Uh, so most of my investments um, in individual stocks are more focused on dividends and um, obviously getting some dividend growth over time um, and seeing the compound uh, effect of that. But I do think it's important to uh, look towards some of these other companies that don't pay dividends but are still super great companies and have a lot of growth potential as well. So that's what my M1 Finance portfolio is about and we're going to take a look at that right here. All right, so this is my M1 Finance uh, portfolio. This is just the uh, history of what's uh, been happening. So since we last talked around uh, the beginning of February, uh, I think that MasterCard dividend was included in that video. Um, but at the beginning of March, I also got a nice little Visa dividend, a measly at two cents. So that's better than nothing. Obviously, like I said, this portfolio isn't focused on dividends, but a few of the companies in here pay uh, some very small dividends. Uh, and then, as always, I deposited my $25 a month and then made my trades uh, that M1 makes for me uh, on that same day with that $25. Uh, and then if we just look at the portfolio, this is what it's looking like. So you can see that we have put in about $186 and we've lost about $12 to capital gains. And as you can see, that's really uh, just since March 1st um, has really been going down. It was going down a little bit at the end of February, but not really too much. And we saw a pretty drastic uh, decrease just this past week. So uh, we'll look at exactly what happened. So first off, ARC K. Uh, that was up pretty big uh, initially, uh, probably last month it was up pretty big and then just been going down. Obviously, uh, the things I like to think about with this is that this is definitely uh, invested in some more speculative things and uh, things that don't have a super uh, long track record of performing well in the stock market. So when there is a uh, pullback in the overall market, uh, these types of holdings are generally going to take a larger hit. Uh, so that's definitely what happened. So that's still around 24% of my portfolio. I'm really not worried about this at all over the long term. I think RK will do uh, pretty well. So I'm excited to be able to dollar cost average at these lower levels and get a better average cost. Uh, but so far, Google has uh, been performing very well for me. It's just been doing uh, pretty well the last few months. Uh, even with this little bit of a downtrend, I'm still up about 20% in them and they're about 9% of my portfolio and then the Vanguard Information Technology ETF They're down about 3% which isn't bad at all considering uh, Some of the other holdings are down a lot more than that They're about 8.5% of my portfolio and then Amazon is down about 10% for me They're about 8.5% of my portfolio and then PayPal uh, They're a pretty good company. I think that still has a, a lot of room to grow They're only down about 1% for me and they're about 8% of my portfolio Moving down to Tesla, they've taken an absolute beating the last few weeks. They're down about 30%. They are 7.7% of my portfolio. Moving on to Shopify, they are uh, just about breaking even. Shopify and Visa below here, you can see both of them are about breaking even. Shopify is about 7% and Visa is about 6% of my portfolio. And then uh, Square, they're down a few percent. I think they've uh, really been going down pretty crazy the last uh, few days, but they were doing pretty well before that. So that's why I'm down about 3%. Uh, they're about 4.5% of my portfolio. And then MasterCard is about 4% of my portfolio. They're down, or they're sorry, they're up about 6% for me. Uh, moving on to Adobe, they're down about 12% for me, which is about 4.4% of my portfolio. And then Jumia, oh man, they're uh, about 3.5% of my portfolio and they are down 40% for me, which is uh, pretty crazy. That's just uh, in the last week or two that they've been taking a beating. But uh, this is definitely the most speculative uh, investment in my portfolio and uh, the most unproven. So 
it really doesn't surprise me they're taking a beating and I'm just excited to be able to dollar cost average at these lower prices um, because in the future uh, you know five ten years down the line I think they're gonna be doing you know fantastic and uh, this little drawback is not going to uh, really even be on our radar uh, at that point and then Spotify is down about 15% they're also three and a half percent of my portfolio so yeah, that's where I'm at. Obviously, it's not uh, where you want to see your portfolio in the red overall down about 9%, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's only been, you know, three months I've had this portfolio. Uh, it's pretty new and there's going to be ups and downs in the market. It's going to happen. And uh, I think long term, most of these holdings are going to do very well. So I'm not really worried about that. So the one thing I want to talk about as well is just this referral program M1 Finance has. Uh, so if you sign up using my link, you'll get $10. Uh, in your account when you deposit $100 and I'll get $10 as well. Um, so it's just a way you can support me and help me out a little bit if you are interested in using M1 Finance. I think they're a great brokerage. Um, I really like just the passivity of how it works, especially for these you know volatile stocks uh, that I'm investing in here. It's just really nice to be able to not have to worry about what the price is really and just know that I'm gonna invest every month and uh, not really be concerned about uh, worrying when I should invest or when I should not invest. I'm just investing every month and that's that. And I just really like M1 Finance. So if you guys are interested, I, like I said, I'll leave a link down below and you can sign up and that would really uh, help me out. So I would love to hear how your guys' uh, portfolios are doing uh, within these last few weeks, how much you're down. I'm sure most people are probably down a little bit. Uh, actually, the market was pretty green for a lot of the blue chip dividend stocks for me on Friday, so that was really cool. But uh, still, for some of those uh, you know growth stocks or more speculative investments, it was kind of red. So that was sort of an interesting day in the market. But let me know how you guys uh, are doing with your portfolio, uh, specifically maybe some of your more speculative or growth oriented investments, because uh, you know those are oftentimes more volatile. So it's kind of fun to see. Uh, where they're, those are going over time. But uh, that's all I have for you today. I'll leave some videos up over here if you're interested in checking out some other videos from me. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next one.